Crystal Cole, the math lady. Today, we're going to be working on lesson one today, which is all about addition. I know. You're like, Nicole, I know how to add. I, I know that. But we're just going to be doing some review and going over some vocabulary, which sometimes people miss. So take a look. We're going to be using, just to show you some addition, my son's linking lo linking Lincoln logs. I can talk. All right. So take a look and we'll do some addition with the logs. Here are our linking logs. And first we're going to have two, one, two. And then we want to add four to it. One, two, three, four. So if we added them all together, we would have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six linking logs in total. So what does that show us? Well, we started out with two, and then we wanted to add four more linking logs to it. So let's just stop right there. These things actually have special names. Yeah, they do. They are called add-ends. The numbers that you are adding together are called add-ends. I know, it sounds like a pretty easy name for something that you're adding. Now, when we add our two and four, we got a total of six. And this also has a special name. It's called the sum. And just like in the English language, or I'm sure pretty much any language, you can write a sentence. So we have a number sentence. We created one when we were adding. Our number sentence was two plus four equals six. Do you think it would have mattered the order that we added the Lincoln Logs in? Because first we just did 2 plus 4 and we got 6. But what if we had started with the second column and we started with the 4? And we did 4 plus 2. Do you think it would still have been the same answer? And the answer would be yes, right? We, st we would have just said 1, 2, 3, 4 and then added 5 and 6. We still would have gotten 6 as the answer. In math, this is a special property. It's called the commutative property of addition. It means that you can change the order of the add-ins and still end up with the same sum. There's also another property of addition. It's called the identity property of addition. It says if you take a number, let's start with 6, and you add zero to it. You add nothing to it. So really, we haven't changed anything. Our sum is still going to be six. So when we add zero to something, we get the identical number we started out with. That's the identity property of addition. Now let's talk about using the addition algorithm. What does that mean, algorithm? Sounds like a fancy word. Well, it is. It's a very fancy word, but all it means is a process for getting to a solution, to getting to an answer. So addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, they're all processes that get to an answer or a solution. We're just going to focus on the addition algorithm. Okay, take a look at this problem. Jason and John want to buy a drone. Jason has $136, John has $175. How much do they have in total? Let's actually use some money manipulatives to see what this looks like. We can see that Jason has $136. We also can see that John has $176. Six dollars. We want to add them together so we always start with the ones place. So if we have six ones and five ones, that's a total of 11 ones. That's a whole lot of ones. So why don't we take 10 of them away and replace it with a ten dollar bill? Okay, so here we go. Get rid of this and get rid of all of these. We have a ten dollar bill in its place. Okay, Three not too bad. But a wait, let's look at the $10 one, bill. That's a whole lot of Which is 311 We have three dollars. tens and eight tens, which is 11 tens. Why don't we do the same thing with the tens, is get rid of 10 of them and replace it with a $100 bill. And we just bring this guy over. When we're done, we have 300, a 10, and a 1, which is $311. Let's do that again, but this time, let's not use the actual money. Let's use what we know about place value. So when adding, we always start with the ones place. Well, let's do it. 
6 plus 5 is 11. So I could write 11 here, but let's go ahead and exchange 10 of those 1s for a 10. So I'm going to erase this 1 here and put it up here, because it's now in the 10's place. And 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 plus 7 is 11. Now I could write 11 here, but since it's more than 10, let's exchange that for a $100 bill. Okay, and bring it over to the hundreds column, hundreds place. One, two, and three. $311 is your answer. Let's try it with this number. This time we won't use any money. We always start in the ones place. Eight plus five is 13. So we put our three down, but bring our one, 10, over to the tens place. Now let's add there. One plus one is two. Two plus nine is 11. We're going to put the one down and bring another one up to the top because now it's in the hundreds place. One plus three is four. Four plus four is eight. So our answer, 813. Okay, if you know how to do that, you are golden. <laughs> Definitely try the practice problems. Make sure you can do them. It's Nicole the Math Lady. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.